Hello everybody, this is Brent Warner at edtech.tv. I hope everything is going well. Today I've got a uh, mouthful of a question, which is, what's an alternative to turning in homework if I want to engage my students through multiple media? And what this question is really asking is, you know, I don't just want to turn in worksheets. And, you know, some people are even doing the, uh, the no more worksheets hashtag and all that type of stuff. Um, so there are lots of different ways to engage students. And it's not all just, you know, write these questions down and write the answers on a piece of paper. Uh, you know, you can do all sorts of different things. And today we're going to take a look at one of the best ways I know to do that. And that answer is Google Voice. So you might have kind of heard of Google Voice in the periphery. If you've gone to professional development, you've definitely seen it, you know, at some of the conferences. Um, but a lot of people just don't realize how great of a service Google Voice is for so many teachers. Um, there are lots of different functions inside of Google Voice, but the biggest and main one that I want to cover is the fact that it transcribes your student's voice right into, you know, basically into your Google Voice inbox. It looks just like Gmail. And so whatever your students say into the phone, it transcribes and then you can go back in and check it later. So let's say that you were to sign a uh, homework assignment where you know the students had to reflect on a reading or figure out a problem instead of necessarily having to you know write it out or you know figure out something like that maybe you could set it up where they can just call your google voice number and they would leave a message for you and you could say hey you got to leave a message that's thoughtful and it's a minute long or however long it is if you wanted to kind of set your own rules about it that's fine but then you don't have to worry about collecting it because it all goes right into your inbox there. And then you can just scan quickly because you can read everything quickly and see if they're getting the main ideas. And if you're not totally sure, you can listen in and uh, then you can talk to your students about it later and you can even respond to them. So we're going to take a quick look at how to do that today with Google Voice. And uh, we'll see you right over there into the main page. You're going to go to google.com slash voice. And if you don't get a little pop up, if you're already logged in or something like that, then you'll get down here. It says get a voice number. And you're going to have to upgrade your account. Now, it's going to tell you what you can use Google Voice for. Um, I would recommend that as teachers, we're going to say that we want a new number. You don't want to use your regular mobile number. You're going to want a new number directly from Google Voice. So... It says, uh, you know, it wants to add forwarding phone numbers. So you're going to fill out some of the information. And that's the number that they're going to give. And I'm going to hit call me now. Please enter your two digit verification code. Thank you. Your account is now active. To record your name in voice mode, you can press 1. I'll be making an announcement later. And you can continue on if you want. So here's the next thing that you have to do. Uh, it says you're going to choose your number. So you're going to tell them where you are by choosing either your zip code or your city and or a word phrase slash number. So I'm going to choose uh, Southern California, Orange County area where I'm at. And I'll search and continue. And now I've got my Google Voice number. Obviously, I can give out the number to anyone now. I'm kind of set up with everything, so I just have to make sure that I actually remember that number, so don't lose it, because now we're going to move on to the next thing. When you go to Google Voice, you're going to recognize that it looks you know, quite similar to Gmail if you're using Gmail on your browser. So you've got your inbox, your start section. Uh, here we've got voicemails, text, history, etc. Uh, so it's all laid out the same idea as Gmail, except for this is for voice messages instead of for... Uh, you know, emails. And Google even sends you your first message. So it says, you know, welcome to Google Voice, and it does all that for you. And so you can look at this and you can see that this is the message written out, and we can also listen to it. Welcome to Google Voice. Google Voice gives you a single phone number that rings all of your phones. So pretty straightforward. All of your messages are going to come in here, and then this is the transcribed version of it. The very first thing you're going to want to do once you get in is you're going to want to go to the settings and click on settings. And then you're going to go to calls. 
Now, the reality is you don't want uh, the phone probably calling you at all times, and especially if you're going to be using this as a transcription device, you're going to hit enable do not disturb. And you don't have to have it turn off at any time, so it'll just always be on to do not disturb. Uh, and that's going to be your setting right there. So you're all good. Everything's clear. You know, you can you can make a lot of other changes if you wanted to change your voicemail message, um, if you wanted to have text, all that type of stuff. Lots of different things to play with. But today for the main function, we're going to just take a look at um, students calling you, leaving messages, and you can kind of verify that everything gets done. So then we'll go back to inbox. Now I can assign my students some homework, and it's probably a good idea to give them a protocol such as, you know, say your name first and the class period that you're in or something like that. Um, you would give them the information that you want them to fill in or that you want them to say over the phone, and then you give them the phone number. So here they've got it, they're going to call it up and leave their message. Brent Warner. Is not available. Please leave a message after the tone. Hi, Mr. Warner. This is Stuart Dent. Uh, today's homework, I wanted to give you the answers. The question number seven, the answer is, yes, I do believe what they are saying. And question number 11 is, I'm not totally sure yet. Thank you. Shortly after the call, the, com the call will come into my inbox and it will start to transcribe. But it doesn't really matter because I'm not usually going to be waiting for the calls to come in. I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to check it when it's convenient for me. So here's a transcription of the, uh, the inbox that has come in. So we can see that it's a little bit different. I mean, this is a, obviously a computer trying to get all the information in, but it says, you know, hi, Mr. Warner, this is Stuart Damps, and I said Dent. Uh, today's homework, I wanted to give you the answer to the question. Number seven, the answer is yes, I do believe that what they're saying. And uh, question number 11 is I'm not totally sure yet. So if I don't feel like the transcription is totally perfect, and by the way, it's a little bit more gray when Google is less sure about the quality of their transcription as well, I can always listen in. Hi, Mr. Warner. This is Stuart Dent. Uh, today's homework, I wanted to give you the answer. And it's pretty easy for me to check that everything is done that way. I'll have a long line of these, and so I don't have to sit and listen to every everyone's questions. I can just quickly check to see what they did. Um, of course, you're going to want to change this around. You're not simply going to want them to choose, you know, yes or no or something like that. But you might have them give their thoughts on something. You might have them share some of their own ideas. Um, anything that you would maybe normally want them to write something out or maybe think about and talk to you about. In this case, you can just start saving it automatically right into your Google Voice account. So let's also quickly jump over to uh, my email. And back on my own phone, I also can go in and check my email. And I can see that I've got a new voicemail. Gives me the information where it came from. I can scan and look at it quickly just to see who's turned their information in. And uh, that's going to be it. I'm just going to go, okay, they're set. I'll check that out later. If I wanted to play the message, I could play it from inside the mail as well. But that's all I really need to know. There are lots of cool little extra functions that you can play with. Uh, one that I'm particularly fond of is this one. When you click on text, you can leave the student a message and send it right off to them via text message. So the student can get that information, they can go, okay, cool, I'm set, and good to go. So that's just a very brief introduction to Google Voice, and I think the more you consider the possibilities, you're really going to realize, you know, how much potential this can have for your classroom. So you know, get into it. I've got a few more ideas on the actual post at edtech.tv. I think you can start to see where some of these assignments, uh, you know, depending on your subject matter, could really come in useful for your students. So your homework uh, first to first is grab the cheat sheet at edtech.tv. People have been liking those. So uh, if you head right over there, you can get the cheat sheet and, uh, you know, look at it alongside as you set up. 
And next, I really do want to warn you, please check your school's privacy policies. Uh, one of the things you will have noticed is that the information is not really hidden, and so you need to know what's okay and what's not okay. Um, you know, phone numbers do show up on there, all those types of things, so really check and make sure you're okay with all of that. Then finally, uh, sign yourself up at google.com slash voice. I'm assuming that everything's going to be good and you're going to be able to work with it, so get your account going and uh, make sure you're working together with all of your students and you can set up some awesome, awesome stuff. Finally, I'd love to hear from you. You know where I am. Twitter at EdTechTV, Instagram at EdTechTV, Facebook at EdTechTV. Uh, you can find me. You're obviously here looking at the YouTube video right now. So I want to hear from you. And if you come up with some unique and original ideas on how to use Google Voice, I definitely want to hear about that as well. So shoot me a message, uh, leave me a message, however you want to get hold of me, I will be listening and looking out for uh, your contact. Hope all's going well, and I will talk to you soon.